Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Then, what we see, the way John Stuart Mill tried to provide these five rules, five methods, the method of agreement, the method of uh, difference, the method of the joint method of uh, agreement and difference, the method of residues as well as the method of concomitant variations. Okay? The use of any Mill's methods presupposes an antecedent a cause assumption about which circumstances are relevant for the explanation of the phenomena under investigation. Once these circumstances are chosen as possible causes, the method, a single method, I mean among those five methods which we have discussed of John Stuart Mill or a combination of all methods or a combination of two, three methods, they help us correlate some of them with the phenomena under consideration. But this choice of possible causes might be erroneous. If it is so, the conclusion inferred by Mill's methods first cannot remain unaffected by the original mistake. Secondly, even if a correlation is established, there is no proof that correlation is not fortuitous, but necessary. Though it is true that greater the number of observed instances of correlation, higher the chances of the correlation being lawful and not fortuitous, we can never assert with certainty no matter how many the observed instances that the correlation is not fortuitous. Thus, the logical now, cleavage between induction and deduction, which Mill tried to get rid of, remained intact. The cruel fact that induction is induction and deduction is deduction and the twins shall never meet remained uh, uh, um, uh, unaltered to the discomfort of the inductivists. The purpose of all these, I mean, till now what we have discussed, quickly let, let us recapitulate. We have discussed the ontological as well as uh, uh, the normative structure of science okay? and from there on we move to the methods of science. The, in the methods of science, we are discussing uh, inductivism and hypothesism, which were very much prominent uh, since the uh, 17th century, I mean with the birth of the modern philosophy of science and they have become, I mean they became uh, rival methodologies and each of these methods had followers among uh, natural philosophers as well as moral philosophers, I mean scientists as well as philosophers. Okay? And then what we said that the way inductivists suggested that no science must begin with observations, must remain at the level of observations and also must end with observations. Uh, uh, hypothesists claim that science begins only when we go beyond observations. That is why it must be transobservational in nature. Okay? Why, why do we do this exercise in, in STS studies, philosophy of science? I mean, why do we study philosophy of science, methods of science in, in STS? Okay? The, the, the purpose, the intention of all these historical details is to set the stage for the discussion on 20th century deliberations on the methods of science. Okay? For 
the various views that have been developed in 20th century are to be understood not only as reactions to each other, but also as reactions to a whole historical tradition. We shall now come to a detailed discussion on the, the various theories that have been put forward in the 20th century regarding the methods of science. Now, let us let us see how, how uh, we, we can uh, uh, look at this, this particular phenomenon. Okay. The, the most important and the first method of science that we witnessed in the 20th century okay, begins with the emergence of a, of a very dominant school of thought called positivism. Positivism is an extremely well known and till recently very influential theory of science and its method. It is a closely knit set of tenets formulated with an admirable amount of clarity and consistency. If you look at the, the law of stages by August Comte, you find that August Comte followed three stages in the development of society, in the development of our economy, culture and polity. Okay. Those three stages are theological stage, metaphysical stage and then positivistic or scientific stage. What is this theolo theological stage? Theological stage believed in the fact that uh, changes occur because of supernatural interventions. Changes can should be changes must be whatever social, economic, political changes, cultural changes, they must be attributed to the, the supernatural movements, supernatural interventions. On the other hand, metaphysical stage suggests that no, it is not mediated by super changes are not mediated by supernatural forces, rather they are a byproduct of natural movements, movements by nature. Everything is mediated through nature, whereas positivistic stage or scientific stage suggests that no, it is uh, not uh, 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 positivism rejected the idea that uh, changes do not occur because of uh, supernatural forces. At the same time, changes do not occur because of the movements of nature. Changes occur because of the, the interventions made by human action, human labor. If you look at this, this, this transition, then it can take us to a different level. You will find that till this, this the 17th, 18th century, uh, in especially England, okay, Europe on the whole, that you will find that uh, in 18th century, we witnessed industrial revolution, enlightenment, modernity, critical thinking, reasoning capacity. Uh, the capacity to interrogate, the dominance of church was questioned. Okay? I mean science became supreme, critical thinking became supreme. Okay? Perhaps that kind of enlightenment we have not witnessed till now in Indian context. Okay? In partially we have witnessed, but we have not yet witnessed that kind of enlightenment. Okay? It does not imply that we have to follow that only that kind of enlightenment, we, we can have our own en enlightenment also that is a different matter. But why did positivism deviate from metaphysical stage or why metaphysical stage uh, uh, deviated from uh, or why did metaphysical stage deviate from um, theological stage, because supernatural forces which uh, theological stage propagated for, okay, do not have any place 
in the metaphysical schema. Okay. I mean supernatural forces were termed unscientific, obsolete, okay. they were guided by dogma, they were guided by uh, uh, dogma is propagated by um, uh, religion, propagated by the powers that be, uh, propagated by the state, propagated by the uh, uh, kings, emperors and so on. In that case, in such circumstances metaphysical stage obviously, was a much improved stage as compared to the theological stage metaphysical stage suggested no, there is no place for supernatural force in, in our schema of knowledge production, rather changes occur only when nature intervenes. Then there was a concept called nature's dictum appeared that nature controls human action. Human beings started contemplating on nature that is called faculty of contemplation. Okay. Then what scientific stage or positivistic stage argued that no human beings do not simply contemplate on nature, but also control nature. Then we witnessed a transition from faculty of contemplation to faculty of control. That is why once Marx said that by acting upon nature, human beings not only change nature, but also change uh, the social relationships. I mean human beings not only change nature, but also change themselves. That is very important, but this control over nature and prior to control over nature, we, we, we discussed that, that faculty of contemplation, okay. this, this transition from faculty of contemplation to faculty of control in the context of the transi transition from metaphysical stage to the positivistic or scientific stage must be understood. Okay. That is why uh, in the metaphysical stage, nature was placed on a higher pedestal vis-a-vis -vis human beings. Whereas, in the positivistic or, or, or scientific stage, human beings were placed on a higher pedestal vis-a-vis -vis nature. That is important. Okay? I mean, in the metaphysical stage, nature was the subject and human beings were objects. Whereas, in the positivistic stage, human beings became subjects, whereas nature became object. Okay. Then in this, in this kind of transition of and this transition has not occurred uh, overnight. This transition has occurred due to changes in the modes of production, due to changes in our uh, intellectual and political consciousness over time and across space. That is why many, many uh, uh, perceptive thinkers, they also have suggested that no, uh, the distinction between faculty of contemplation and faculty of control is not rigid, but porous, because human beings are always a part of nature. Uh, and human beings also know uh, how to control nature at the same time, nature also knows uh, how to uh, to how to exhibit its uh, uh, anger towards uh, uh, human interventions, undue human interventions. Okay. And and uh, why I said undue in, uh, human interventions? Precisely because the way human beings uh, uh, today dominate nature. In fact, this uh, power over nature or domination over nature has in reality been translated into power over people. And that is why we see uh, in, the in the construction of uh, big technology projects, uh, construction of large dams, uh, deforestation, uh, how 
this power over uh, nature uh, controlling a particular technology has affected millions of uh, uh, lives and their livelihoods. Uh, and it is this domination over nature, uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, domination uh, over nature and then subsequently domination over people, power over nature, uh, subsequently power over people okay, has made a mockery of liberty in any substantial sense. I mean, you have got freedom to, um, uh, 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 you have got liberty, uh, the idea of liberty uh, which was envisaged during the French revolution of 1789, but if you look at this, uh, this liberty also uh, 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 fades away uh, 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 with the passage of time, because of this undue human interventions. Okay? But this is a separate, sto separate story altogether, uh, how we can bring about a critique to this uh, power over nature, but uh, or power over people, but, but for the time being, but for the time being, let us concentrate more on more on uh, the aspect of scientific stage or positivistic stage. Positivistic stage emerged, I mean positivism stood squarely against metaphysics. This scientific stage, a uh, positivistic stage, they questioned the dominance of church. They, they propounded for industrial revolution, they propounded for changes in the modes of production, okay? they propounded for uh, 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 more and more reasoning capacity uh, uh, among the people. I mean positivism um, always was in favor of scientific temper. Okay? In this context, we are going to discuss positivism as a, as, a, uh, as a method. We have only discussed uh, positivism as a stage of society, as a stage in the development of society from theological stage to metaphysical stage to positivistic or scientific stage. But now we will see positivism as a method of science, as a method to generate knowledge, as a method to produce knowledge. This is very important. Okay. Now, what are the then if if positivism is a, uh, is a uh, even today is, is a very important method to produce scientific knowledge, okay, then what are the central characteristics? What are the central tenets of positivism? Okay. First, tenet one that is methodological. What is this methodological? We will say methodological, methodological monism, inductivism, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, systematic verifiability, uh, observations are pure and indubitable, uh, observations uh, unilateral relationship between observation and theory, there must be a dichotomy between fact and value, uh, uh, all um, uh, explanation in must involve deduction and so on. We will we'll see what kind of thing. Okay. When I say methodological, when, when I mean that science is for, for positivists, for the proponents of positivism, that science is distinct from all areas of human activity or creativity because it possesses a method unique to it. That is the first and perhaps one of the first and foremost uh, uh, important characteristics uh, of uh, positivism. What is that? That science is distinct from all areas of human activity or creativity because it possesses a method unique to it. I mean other areas of human activity or creativity because of the context positivism also emerged as a reaction to both theological as well as metaphysical stages. Okay? Then if a proponent of theology okay, 
suggest that no knowledge is produced through beliefs. It does not imply that science does not have any belief. Science also believes in cert certain beliefs, science follows certain beliefs, but those, but theology does not allow those beliefs to be translated into the forms of knowledge. Theology does not allow those beliefs to be verified. Theories, uh, I mean theologies do not allow, I mean the theological framework does not allow those beliefs to be cross checked, examined, explained. Whereas, positivism provides that space for its beliefs to be examined, explained, verified, cross checked and so on. How? In terms of empirically confirmed and logically consistent statements of regularities. It must be based on experience as well as reason. Okay? That is what positivism believes in this. It is very important that 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 science is distinct from all areas of human activity or creativity, because it possesses a method unique to it that is methodological. Then what is this methodological monism? If you look at this, now the, that there is only one method common to all sciences irrespective of their subject matter that is methodological monism that whether it is physics or chemistry or biology or astronomy, okay, they follow, follow a method common to, they, they follow a common method. Okay. It does not imply that this, this is the end, we can also have a critique to positivism later. Okay. If you uh, uh, look at this, I mean uh, that you will not find the kind of methods that uh, uh, sciences follow. The same methods uh, theology or metaphysics never followed. Okay? That is why these methods, I mean the, the what uh, then what kind of methods you know, on the basis of experience and reason. Thirdly, third tenet lies in inductivism, that the method of science is the method of induction. Positivists argue that you come from, you make a principle of induction, I mean the method of induction which suggests that you start with a particular instance, then provide an in evidence in terms of two premises, you require at least two premises to arrive at a concrete generalization or you derive a conclusion. Okay. Suppose Socrates is mortal, X uh, Socrates is uh, I mean Socrates is mortal, uh, uh, Socrates is a man that is why all men are mortal okay. that is the, the method of induction that they, from particular instances to arrive at a concrete generalization. Okay. Then the fourth one is systematic verifiability. Positivists argued that the the hallmark of science consists in the fact that it, its statements are systematically verifiable. That is why I gave you the example that I have seen a ghost. If I have seen a ghost, then others also should be able to see that. I can say that uh, no, um, I can, uh, I have seen a ghost, I talk to my grandfather uh, at nights. Mm. But that is not science, that is something else, okay? because it cannot be verified. Okay? Somebody may say that, no just because it cannot be verified, it can, can it not be called science, but science always believes in not simply observable facts, 
but also verifiable facts which which the the the, the frameworks of theology and metaphysics they they missed out they they do not believe in this they only believe in the observable facts but positivists claim that the positivists argue that science not only believes in observable facts but also believes in verifiable facts okay if those observations cannot be verified cannot be cross checked cannot be explained cannot be examined properly then that is not science okay that is not a part of knowledge acquisition activity okay the fifth point the fifth point that scientific observations are shown or 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 can be shown to be pure in the sense that they are that pure okay we will come to indubitability a little while later okay that that uh, scientific observations are or can be shown pure in the sense that they are theory independent i mean observations are theory independent observations do not depend on theory as inductivists argue that's why we uh, I, what did inductivists argue that observe in uh, our first we uh, must make uh, first we must collect observational data without recourse to any theory in this sense if you look at that uh, observations in the positivistic schema okay they are theory independent they do not depend on theory it leads us to make a point that theories are we note from uh, facts or observations observations are not we note from facts uh, observations uh, or facts are not we note from uh, uh, theories rather theories are we note from um, or drawn from facts or observations such that a theory what is a theory for in the positivistic schema a theory is nothing but a, uh, nothing more than a condensed version of and therefore reducible to a set of observations or or set of statements uh, describing observations i repeat that theories are we note from facts or observations such that a theory is nothing more than a condensed version of and therefore is reducible to a set of statements describing observations then it must start with observation like the inductivist schema okay it it leads us to a point where we can say that there is a unilateral relationship between observation and theory okay if i say there is a there must be a unilateral relationship between observation and theory then it implies that theories are dependent on observations whereas whereas observations are theory independent observation leads to theory formulation whereas theory doesn't lead to observations rather theories are dependent theories are very much contingent upon the way we make observations that's why there is a unilateral relationship between observation and theory observation leads to theory but the converse is not true okay that's why if i say that to a given set of observation statements there corresponds uniquely a theory such that we can deduce theory from observations okay then why why is it so that only observation can lead to uh, uh, theory but uh, not the con but uh, the converse is not true why is it so no precisely because if you look at this that uh, the the observation that we make in the positivistic schema 
it is construed as a fact, whereas theories are not facts in the positivistic scheme. Theories are winnowed from those facts, those facts they make a theory possible, those observations they make a theory possible. That is why there must be a dichotomy or distinction between fact and value. What is a dichotomy? A dichotomy means opposed group, opposed category. If I say uh, uh, subject object, image text, okay, there they constitute dichotomy. They they essentially they constitute incommensurability thesis. They are not commensurable with each other. Okay. That, that is why there is, there is a dichotomy between uh, uh, fact and value. Okay. I mean that our factual judgments are value neutral and our value judgments have no factual content. If I say, if I say uh, perhaps you are able to see this table or see this laptop. Okay this is a fact, this table is a fact, this uh, mouse is a fact if I so. Okay. But if you look at this, but, but, but if I say no this laptop looks beautiful, if I say this table looks ugly, if I say this mouse looks beautiful, then I add value to it, this is not a fact. Okay. Science being the paradigmatic instance of actual inquiry, okay, does not have any value contents, but does not have any value content or uh, uh, does not have any value commitments. Science in the positivistic schema always starts with factual content. This is a table, this is a uh, laptop, this is a water bottle, this is my uh, watch, uh, these are all facts. But if I say no, my watch looks beautiful, science or ugly, my uh, I mean science does not believe in this, science always believes in facts, we cannot add value to it. That is why values the way we study, okay, the way STS scholars are engaged in studying values, okay, they become a part of interpretation. This is this is how I may say that you no, know, it looks beautiful, it looks ugly, it is good, it is bad. Okay, this this is it doesn't come under the purview of science. Okay, the, it comes under the purview of interpretation. This is how this is the subjective perception that I, I add on to a particular objective reality. But science does not look at the subjective perception as such in the positivistic schema, rather it looks at the objective reality alone. When I when 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 positivists argued that all explanation involves deduction, what does it mean? you look at this, the tenet number 8, what it means that science must start with some kind of a pattern, all scientific explanation must start with a pattern. It, it can start with a set of laws followed by a set of statements describing initial conditions. I mean when I say initial conditions, I mean an evidence must be provided. See if you just provide a law and without giving an example, uh, you are not able to explain that, you are just providing a statement, you are providing a law, but you must be able to provide an evidence in the form of initial condition 
I mean a set of laws when I say it is premise number 1, when I say a set of uh, statements describing initial conditions in the form of premise number 2 and then you derive a conclusion I mean a statement describing the phenomenon to be explained. All scientific explanation okay, must follow this pattern. What is that pattern? Now, it must start with a set of laws followed by a set of statements describing initial conditions and then you arrive at a conclusion in the form of a statement uh, describing the phenomenon to be explained. In other words, to explain a phenomenon is to deduce its description from a set of premises constituted by lodge and statements describing initial conditions. In sum, okay, in its totality, in a nutshell, okay, all explanation, all scientific explanation involves deduction and an explanation which does not have or cannot be recast into this pattern. I mean this pattern of uh, following a set of laws, then a set of statements describing initial conditions and from there you conclude that a set of uh, statements I mean a, 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 I mean a statement describing the phenomenon to be explained if any explanation which does not have or cannot be recast into the this pattern in the pro, in the in in the positivistic schema okay is not a legitimate scientific explanation and therefore it is subject to deductive nomology what is that deductive it is a fallacy i mean it is null and void it does not hold true, it does not, uh, it is not valid, it is not legitimate. Okay. Then when you come to this point that the that the progress of science, okay, I, I have not yet com completed this portion, I mean I have I, I still have a point to make in the context of the indubitability of observations, we will see how, but, but, but let me build a context, build a background so that the progress of science consists in the uh, uh, increasing accumulation of observations and the cumulative growth of our theories based on those, based on that kind of accumulation of observations. Okay. If you look at this, then the, the then science must be objective. The objectivity of science is guaranteed by the fact that our scientific theories are based on based upon indubitable observations, because our observations in the positivistic schema cannot be doubted. Our observations can be indubitable because they are or can be shown to be theory independent. I mean this is where the, 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 the point lies that as observations cannot be doubted, okay, the kind of knowledge that we produce through observe by making observations, okay, then they become pure, then they lead us to formulate newer and newer theories. And the aim of philosophy of science is to discover and legitimize these universal and changeless norms which science follows and by following science, by following which science has become the most rational enterprise in the positivistic schema. Philosophers of science seek to understand science in terms of these norms, these, these central tenets of positivism which determine their scientific practices. That is why whenever you talk to scientists barring a few that they, they mostly they follow these 
methods, no positives, while practicing. And in doing so, they provide an account of science which is normative. These methods become the normative framework of science. Okay. Since these norms constitute the very logic of scientific practices, philosophers of science provide what may be called a logic of science. Keeping these tenets in mind, okay, positivists set for themselves a program by adapting which they thought they could defend the principle of induction in the fact of the formidable attack made by David Hume. David Hume was uh, himself, he, he was an inductivist, but, uh, but the kind of uh, 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 a critique that he uh, brought about so far as inductivism was concerned, I mean in that context. As inductivists, they were obliged, I mean positivists were, I mean positivists were obliged to ward off the ghost of Hume by showing that the principle of induction can be rationally justified. Positivism, uh, I mean positivists asserted that scientific observations are in principle theory free and therefore, are indubitable, they cannot be doubted scientific observations. Observations or facts are prior, theories are not prior, observations are prior, facts are prior to the formulation of theory. Okay? Theories which are their uh, interpretations are posterior. As I, I said, as we discussed that uh, observations uh, are uh, 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 observations are prior, observations lead to the formulation of theories. That is why observations uh, are observations are pure, observations are uh, indubitable, observations cannot be doubted. That is why you will find observations are prior and theories are merely interpretations of those observations and hence they are posterior. Okay? And these observations constitute the bedrock on which the theoretical edifices of science rest. The, the edifices constituted by theories are arrived at by using um, uh, uh, the principle of induction. And now, positivists thought that if they could show that the inductively arrived at scientific theories are, are related in certain specifiable ways to the bedrock constituted by uh, indubitable observations, they would succeed in establishing the rationality of our belief mm. in the principle of index. Okay? Critique of positivists program collapsed like a house of cards, the way they formulated this. Okay? And it became uh, the champion, so far as the methods of science are concerned uh, in the 20th century, even, even today in 2017 it is very important. Okay? We just cannot ignore the, the, said, the, the methods of positivism and not only did they, not only did the critics of positivism uh, fail to identify the specific way in which the observational structure, substructure and theoretical superstructure of science were related, but they also dismally indubitable. The opponents of positivism, but convince, however, convincingly showed that the idea of pure or theory independent observation was a myth. Telling arguments were advanced to show that all observations are theory dependent. It may be noted that positivism dominated uh, uh, the scene during the bulk of of the first half of the 20th century, but every tenet of positivism has been successfully called into question by subsequent developments. Okay? The first tenet of positivism was to fall was the one concerning the idea of pure observation. Okay? It is interesting to see in this connection how the critics of uh, uh, positivism exploded the myth of pure observation by showing how our observations presuppose theory. Okay? We may, uh, let us, let us uh, uh, discuss 
a couple of arguments in this case. Okay? I mean uh, how whether observe how observations presuppose theory or the converse is true. Okay? Uh, let us we will see this uh, uh, argument. Uh, 